guess what? Four o'clock rock <laughs> here on a Tuesday. <laughs> he did it. And today we have a special discussion. I mean, this one comes from the commercial world. It comes from the world of real estate, which is, you know, some people think it's what Hawaii is all about. But you know, real estate has to follow tech too. It can't be static and it can't be old fashioned. It's got to get its hands around, you know, communication and information and data and cell phones and apps. And that's why we have Brandon Lau down here. He is a partner, whoa, <laughs> and Locations. <laughs> Locations LLC, one of the biggest real estate firms in the state, as I recall. Yes. Yes, Welcome to the show, Brandon. Thanks for having me, Jay. Appreciate great, it. Great, great, great. Yeah. So let's first, let's, um, you know, get a handle on uh, what's going on at Locations that would drive Locations to make an app, okay? It sounds like there's a certain vitality in the company. Tell me about it. Well, you know, one of our core values, Jay, is that the customer rules. And so being that the customer is always pushing the market, we want to be there to provide them the tools and resources to make the best decisions. Yeah. Uh, we've been a tech leader in the Hawaii real estate industry for decades now. I know uh, you have a research department. We have a, a lot a of research and trying to find out exactly what was going up and down. Yes, exactly. A dedicated research team. Uh, keeps track of hundreds of neighborhoods here on Oahu and throughout the state. Uh, and real estate is local. So you want to make sure we know what's going on in your neighborhood. Politics is local. Real estate is local. Guess what? News is local. I, I just learned that at the NAB show in Las Vegas. News is local too. People, <laughs> <laughs> they want to associate it with, with things that are familiar. Correct. And That's real right. estate has to be familiar if you'll be comfortable with it. Yeah. Yes, yes. So it's a strange mix, you know, because the real estate market is about local things. Mm -hmm. At the same time, the real estate market has all these influences coming in from outside right. that tend to skew it one way or the other, yeah. Right, right. Real estate, I mean, especially in Hawaii, it's, it has such far reaches as an industry. I mean, it's not just a real estate brokerage firm, uh, but it's you have mortgage departments, you have escrow uh, title companies, uh, you have contractors, you have inspectors, surveyors. So real estate reaches into really every aspect of our economy. Yeah. yeah. And we have a very sophisticated real estate industry, don't we? We're not fooling yeah. around here. Somewhere along the line, I'm not sure how it happened, but the real estate you know, industry emerged as a really you know, slick kind of operation with title companies you know, and all the information you could get from the Bureau of Conveyances and, and uh, escrow officers who knew exactly how to handle transactions. Uh, right. Other states do, are not nearly as sophisticated as we are uh, in the infrastructure, if you mm -hmm. will, about real estate transactions. Isn't that true? I, I think uh, we tend to be on the forefront with many things. Uh, mm -hmm. Speaking from my firm's experience, you know, we do have a couple of affiliates, uh, Premier Title, as well as Compass Home Loans. And so we do seek to be on the forefront of technology and the better improvement of the transactional experience. Yeah. yeah. I remember attending a closing in New York one time. Uh, it, was a, it was a brownstone in Brooklyn. Yeah. And uh, it was really, uh, you know, because I had practiced out here before I attended this. And I knew something about what, the way things were going in Hawaii. Right. And so I go to this closing. I mean, it was just an observer, but I go to this closing uh, with um, this brownstone in Brooklyn. And I mean, it was amazing. All these people were there, too many people. And, and they were shuffling paper left and right. The table was covered with paper. And, uh, and, then, and then there were these little points of surprise that came up. It was an ordinary residential transaction, oh, yeah? but everybody was like surprising each other. And there was all this negotiation going on at the closing, which took place in the lawyer's office, which took altogether <laughs> too much time. <laughs> and I'm saying, you know, maybe there are- We don't have that here. We don't have it's that here. God bless <laughs> us. <laughs> we, we do it smooth and friendly, mostly. Yeah. That's right, that's right. So what, what end of it are you in? Are you in residential, commercial, both? Uh, primarily locations involved in residential real estate. Mm -hmm. uh, we are the largest locally owned real estate firm here in Hawaii. Uh, I do also some commercial as well. Uh, we've been around for a long time, since 1969. Um, uh, again, we've continued to improve the way that we want to service our clients. And one of the things we'll talk about later on is the, the apps and the tools that we equip them with. Yeah, I just remembered, uh, you know, that um, Locations was one of the early companies, if not the earliest company, mm -hmm. back in, I want to say, the 70s, um, to, to go online. 
right? To have listings online. You know, yeah. now it seems like old hat, but then, whoa, you know, you could actually go and, and look at MLS listings on the web. That was amazing. We, we had a, a secret room, you might say, where rather than people looking through uh, thick MLS books, we actually automated the MLS. So people would come in, uh, they wouldn't be uh, flipping through paper, but be looking real time at what listings are available. And at that time, it was unheard of. So uh, we, we were pioneers in, in terms of those uh, automation of the MLS and other systems in the process. Yeah, and as I recall, it's coming back to me now. It's coming back. Yeah. Uh, Mike Sklaras, <clears throat> right. brilliant guy, my cousin, by the way, oh, really? <laughs> was, was, <laughs> was there at locations. Yeah. And he was inventing all this stuff, which he later you know, packaged for the mainland uh, with Prudential locations in the mainland. Uh, and it was about something about value your home. That's right. It was right. really helpful to people in the residential business. Right. Uh, basic terms that we know of today, like days on market, you know, uh, those things he coined so that you can measure real estate activity and that you can actually uh, get a handle of where the market is and where it's going to go. Yeah. Uh, and we owe, we owe it to our clients, you know, to be able to have, um, if I can say, reference points that help to guide them in the process. Yeah. yeah. So how about you, Brandon? I mean, how did you get involved in this? I understand you were a violin player for the orchestra. I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> keep going, keep going. <laughs> No, I, you know, I've been uh, a licensed real estate broker for 15 years. Uh, started straight out of college, uh, one year at the bank. Uh, figured out that um, it was a nice uh, work environment, but I wanted to be out there uh, a little more entrepreneurial. So I started in real estate. I've uh, been with locations the whole time, um, and it's a great business. I, I love serving clients. I love being able to uh, help meet somebody's needs, um, and it's never. No, no two clients are alike, no two transactions are alike. Isn't that true? Yeah. Especially now. So, you know, Think Tech, we, we follow, I mean, through many of our shows, we follow the action, at least in Kaka'ako. Right. Ooh, the magic word, Kaka'ako. Right. And we know about these, uh, you know, condos that are being, uh, you know, that are on the market now for two, three million dollars. And some of them, you know, there's one penthouse down there for over a hundred million dollars. I want the commission on that. Uh, <laughs> Are you licensed? No. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe I should be. <laughs> you shouldn't be. <laughs> Where do I apply? Um, so, you know, there's, there's changes. And, uh, you know, if we saw absentee ownership before, it's likely we're going to see much more of that at much higher prices, affecting, mm -hmm. you know, the real estate market, also affecting the real estate, the community, the neighborhood. And so you're in a different mm, such ball game now, aren't you? We are, we are. Uh, in reference to Kakaako, the amazing thing is the majority of buyers there are local. And I like hearing that because... I like hearing it too, I didn't yeah. know. Did you know, did you know this? Do you, you need to write this down. Yeah, go ahead, yeah. sorry. Uh, so they're local, which means that it, it's going to add to a more stable uh, neighborhood, a more stable environment. Yeah. Um, and you're going to have streets that are vibrant. People are going to walk around, they're going to go to the restaurants, they're going to go shopping. It's not going to be a deserted place. Promise you know? me. Uh, we'll do our best. You know, not not myself, but hopefully the developers and everybody involved. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing is, if local buyers, I mean, there have been other iterations. You know, other swells of development. You know, and buying and selling and spinning. Um, and you know, I mean, I remember a lot of the situations where they they the guys, local guys, bought at really high prices for mm -hmm. brand new condos in mm -hmm. great locations. Uh, and then they spun as soon as right. they could, right. uh, or you know they rented. And the question, you know, the question is, do you think that the real estate market, as it is evolving in Honolulu anyway today, right. uh, especially these residential condos, these high-priced residential, are, are p local people who can afford to buy them? Are they going to live in them? Do we have any way of feeling confident about that? Oh yeah, if they're local, they're going to have to live somewhere. You know, we're we're going to this major shift in demographic where. In 2030, 25% of our residents are going to be in their senior years. So a lot of the people buying there uh, who are local have built up equity in homes. They want to downsize. They want to get into more of a convenient, simple lifestyle, uh, walking distance to all these different things. And so I think for the local buyer who's buying in these higher-end condos, they're probably going to live there to enjoy it. Yeah, and yeah. Why else would you spend $2 million yeah, if you're card, not going to enjoy it? have a card it? with you. <laughs> 
<laughs> but no, I, tru I truly feel that's the case, you know. And, well, I, uh, I know the scenario, you know, they, yeah. they, they have the family residence, they grew their children, their children flew the coop, um, and now uh, they want to cool off and have a flat, you know, a yeah. flat condo instead of a walk upstairs. You don't got to drive up the hill. Drive up the hill, a lot of hills. And, and right. so this is, this is the natural progression. Right. And you're putting them in these condos? Yeah. Well, you know, I think buyers naturally put themselves where they need to be. You yeah. know, we are there to guide them along the way. Yeah. And yeah. so that's how the market works. Yeah. yeah. Well, I hope it all works out. But let me add, you know, since we're on Kaka'ako, just before we take our first break here, I'd like to ask you about affordable housing. This is complicated because affordable housing is like one inch away from affordable non-housing, <laughs> right. namely right. homeless. Right. Um, so the question is, how, where does affordable housing play in this, in locations practice, for example? Well, you know, locations, uh, we do have first-time home buyer seminars mm -hmm. and we have them on a regular basis. So we believe that buying a home is not just a good idea, but it's gonna help somebody build wealth for their future retirement. It's going to help them to uh, have that equity in case they need to uh, pay for their college, kids' college education. You know, so uh, buying a property is great because you're living in your investment that's going to appreciate over time. Yeah. And so we want people to own homes. Uh, so as far as our view of affordable housing, however we can do it, we're going to help somebody to get qualified within their means, of course, and help them get into a home. Uh, we do have a number of affordable rentals that we also manage. So housing is not just buying a home, but housing is also maybe renting a house. That's an and interesting point. Yeah, and so uh, either which way, we do want to help people find a home. You think that yeah. uh, rentals will become more ubiquitous? I mean, the, some of the projects in Kaka'ako, for example, are rental projects. Right. Um, some of them are you know, very affordable, or relatively affordable, and some of them are not so relatively affordable. Right. Um, so it, it sounds like there's a new model on the block here. Mm. Uh, and I guess locations is following that too, because um, you know, for a lot of people, it works best or better anyway. Yeah? To have affordable housing? To have rental yeah. housing. Oh, rental housing, yes. I mean, rental housing definitely plays an important role uh, yeah. in the overall landscape of housing needs. Yeah, I mean, um, the couple who just sold their house with all the steps in it, they, they come down, they want a flat apartment, um, but they don't want to put the money down. They want to rent. They don't know how long they're going to live. They don't want to right. invest in something that really isn't going to pay a return while they're alive. Mm. Um, you know, so they, they want to rent. Now, you, you will help them on that? Yeah, I've helped people get into rental situations. In fact, um, we actually have a senior housing designation for our team, uh, and we help people make decisions, whether it's downsizing to an affordable rental or to an assisted living facility uh, or to age in place. Mm. So whatever that... That is great. You know, we have a show on, you know, usually yeah, it's at, sign this, me up. at this block <laughs> called Aging in Grace. Aging uh, in Grace, that's yeah, a great so, name. Yeah. And, and so, you know, we're actually doing it now. We're, we're talking on that show. Two birds and one stone. Fabulous. <laughs> but I get the idea that locations yeah. must be the biggest, or if not the biggest, and very close to the biggest residential real estate firm in the islands, yeah? That's correct. Yeah. Good, because you're doing it all. Yes. So... <clears throat> So before we take a break, I just want to set the stage on one other thing, is sure. that uh, the market has changed in a sense. You know, it reminds me of that ad on television where this couple, uh, they're considering a mortgage uh, on their house and, uh, or some kind of financial transaction, and they have these, all these guys hypothetically lining up to sell them a mortgage on their house. Okay. And the, the idea is they're not really talking to them at all. They're generating competitive bids by uh, all these companies because they have it all on the computer. Right. And I suggest that th that couple, but also younger people, uh, those guys want to know they're, you know, they're getting a competitive um, offering. Uh, want to know that they, they are scouring the market for something that is just right for them. Uh, and somebody has to facilitate that. Yes. And it sounds to me like Locations understands this locations wants to facilitate the process of selection of information of you know of, of evaluating options choosing the best option yes. for the person involved in real estate trend tell yes. me about that and why is that happening well you know we are to answer your question about the market we are in a competitive market um, every uh, area every neighborhood has a, a different pace but overall if you're looking at median price range uh, you're getting multiple offers in fact 
one in every four single family homes and one in every six condominiums is selling at or above the list price. Mm -hmm. So being that the it's case, scary, it's kind of <laughs> it's scary. So if you're, if you're assisting a buyer in this particular situation, one of your main goals is to help them be the one the seller wants to work with. And, and you're going to do that by helping your buyer to prepare uh, not just an offer, but you're going to help them get qualified up front. You're going to make sure they have their cash funds available up front. Uh, you're going to make sure that you present the offer in such a way that the seller wants to work with this person. Because uh, they're not just working and looking at a contract, but they're actually working with a, a buyer on the other side of the table. Yeah. So the more you can communicate that, the more the seller can identify, yes, this is the person that I want to live in my house. The more, <laughs> the better chance they're going to be, <laughs> yeah, a good family, <laughs> whatever the situation. Yeah, you really. know, that person is going to be the right person. So that's what we try to do on the buy side when helping clients. Well, that's very practical in the yeah. sense that, you know, I think some people think that once you find the buyer, the, the realtor's job is over. No, no, no. No, not because at all. It's a long way down from that, you know, initial handshake, if you will, to actually closing and moving in. A That's lot right. of paperwork, a lot of risk, a lot of possibilities. A deal will fall apart for any one of a million reasons. Right. Somebody's got to be there and keep it cool, keep it happening. Yeah. That's correct. That's correct. <laughs> In fact, our company, uh, you know, the realtor is, is the main person who's kind of orchestrating the show. Uh, but our firm has also invested in what we call a transaction management department, which, in which we actually hire a single transaction manager to make sure all the time frames and deadlines are met through the escrow process. We also have a front end services that helps with uh, setting up the showings, the appointments, or the marketing for a property. And so I participate in these services because I believe it's going to help make the transaction smoother for the client. Um, and, that's, and that's what I try to do. You've seen a lot in your 15 years with the I, company. I've seen quite a bit. The yeah. transaction management thing blows my mind. That is really a good idea. Yeah. When yeah. I was practicing, they didn't, they didn't have that. And I guess... Uh, it was a one-man show, yeah. but things have changed. You know, technology yeah. helps us improve the service process. Okay, that's yeah. it. Technology helps us improve the service project. Service process. Process. Yes. Okay, and, and after this break, we're going to find out about the app that reflects this kind of new philosophy in the residential real estate transactional industry. We'll be right back, you'll see. Watch out. Aloha, my name is Richard Emery and I host Condo Insider. We talk about issues facing the Condo Association throughout Hawaii and talk about solutions. When you think about it, about one third of our population lives in some form of common interest real estate. We broadcast every Thursday at 3 p.m. Please tune in. Tune in and thank you. Aloha. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the host of Center Stage of the Think Tech Hawaii Digital Network. On Center Stage, every Wednesday at 2 p.m., we talk to artists, artists of all different ilk, playwrights, novelists, poets, um, singers, sculptors, you name it. We've had uh, all kinds of interesting people on and we always talk about what they do and how they do it and what I find most interesting, we talk about why they do what they do, the process of art, what it does for us as, and our humanity. I hope that you will come and join us and maybe you'll get inspired to bring out your creative spirit as well. That's Center Stage on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock on the Think Tech Hawaii Digital Network. Bingo! I told you we would be back just like MacArthur. Okay, we're back. <laughs> we're back. That's Brandon Lau and me. Brandon is a partner in, uh, in Locations LLC, a big, if not the biggest, it, it is the biggest, residential That's real right. estate um, transactional firm, uh, brokerage firm in, in the, the state. state of Hawaii with right. lots of ancillary corporations and branches and what have you. Um, but we're talking about apps here because this is Think Tech Tech Talks. And we know about this app um, that helps people, facilitates them in their, in their transactional experience. So first thing is, <clears throat> uh, what problem did you see that needed an app? Okay. Well, first of all, Jay, we know that the majority of buyers look online before they contact any professional in the process. And in fact, when we did a survey with the Ward Research Group, uh, we discovered that over 50% of buyers identify their property online. 
So knowing that our firm seeks to deliver on the things that our clients need, we knew we needed to get in front of them in such a way that it would be convenient and actually complement how they're already doing their, their home search. Uh, so initially, we started off with the online uh, website. So you had to go further than the existing internet experience that people were doing. That's correct. Okay. That's and correct. what was the further? I mean, what, and conceptually, okay. what did you want to offer them beyond what the internet would offer them before? So beyond our website, which is locationshawaii.com, we created an app which allowed you to use all the same features, but on any interface, whether it's a smartphone, an iPad. Uh, it's uh, a responsive site, so you can actually use it on any of those devices. Yeah, responsive means you take a website, put it on a phone, and it still looks good. It's the right. same site. It just right. ad adapts itself to a smaller screen. Right. Yeah. right. And being that it's an app, I guess that's a natural process of how it's designed. Um, but so number one, simplicity was the key. You know, we wanted to make something simple. Uh, there are other competing apps out there you know, that take information from what we call the multiple listing service and populate either a list or populate pictures, but they're not truly local. You know, it, it's just like, you know, working with a person who has a business here in Hawaii or working with somebody who's in the mainland. Most people, I think, would want to work with somebody locally just because they know the neighborhood. Sure, absolutely. They, they know the people. Absolutely. Right? So we needed to uh, take that same concept and put it into our app. It's a local app which means it has information about not just general street addresses, but we actually have condominium names. You know, how many times do you actually repeat to somebody, oh, I live at uh, 1778 Alamana Boulevard? No, you say, I live at Discovery Bay, or I live at uh, some other place. Yeah, that's you helpful. Know? Yeah, so we have that in there. Uh, we also have um, the difference between leasehold and fee simple in our searches. Uh, a lot of mainland uh, firms in general don't understand the concept of leasehold which we are very familiar with here in Hawaii. Uh, we also have... Um, Actually, we're too familiar with it. We're too... <laughs> we should give it up altogether. <laughs> Sorry. Well, it's, it's moving in that direction naturally, I think. Um, but, you know, you also have a lot of other features. Uh, we have a, a section where you can actually draw on a map. And let's say you're walking down um, uh, Bishop Street, and you want to know, well, what's selling around here? You know, Capitol Place, a pinnacle. So you can circle that block and up pops up the existing listings. Um, you circle it with your hand. You circle it with the finger. Your finger. Yeah, your magic finger. <laughs> Poof, it comes up. <laughs> and you can choose how you want to look at it. Most people, they just make decisions based on pictures. Okay, I think oh, we're in the slides now. There it so is. Let's, let's, uh, let's track on these slides. So tell us about these slides, yeah. Brandon. So this here is a slide of the, the mapping feature. So again, if you just use your magic finger, you draw a little circle around the section that you want to find out more information on and immediately those listings pop up. Um, and so if you click on any one of those listings, you'll mm -hmm. get more detailed information. Uh, so on the left, you see you have all the property details, the addresses, and so forth. And then you have the uh, matching ma uh, map on the right. So that stays there, so you can reference both at the same time. You can click on the heart if you want to save certain properties that interest you. Um, we also have a new feature that allows you to do a CMA, which stands for Comparative market analysis. And that's really a tool that, in fact, realtors use. So you're, you're giving the consumer a tool that realtors use to help evaluate properties. Why not? Yeah. I, I mean, mean, the more we educate our will, clients, so the better decisions well. they make. Yeah. Right? Right. Um, and then, of course, pictures. We have full-size picture galleries. And I think that's where a lot of people are making their decisions, yeah. is on the visual basis. So I'm, what I'm getting is, um, you want to give them as much information and make it easy for them to, you know, make their, to, to observe what's in the market, to make a choice, to know all they have to do to make the choice and the analysis and all that. Um, and so a, any person, including my own self, right. could call up your app right. and I could get all this information and then I would feel very appreciative to you, to locations for having endowed me that way. Well, and I would definitely call you and say, Brandon, now that I've made my choice, I want to engage you to, to help me buy that, right? Exactly, exactly. So, and we make it really easy for you on our app. You can actually just click on whoever helped you to download it, and they'll immediately get whatever question or inquiry that you have on that property. Yeah. And we'll schedule a showing or whatever you need. 
Okay, but so uh, suppose I'm a bit of a wise guy. Okay. And I find the property that I like. I use your app that you spent a lot of time and energy putting together. And I say, well, thank you, locations, but I'm going to go walk down the block and I'm going to knock on the door and I'm going to see if I can make a deal directly, you know, with the people there. I mean, how do you stop me from doing that if you can? Well, there's something called agency, and given your background in real estate, <laughs> you'll know that uh, you probably want your own representative. Yeah. You know, the seller has their agent called a listing agent, and you probably want a buyer's agent to represent your interests. So most likely, you're going to want to have somebody such as myself or the guy at the other end of the app yeah. uh, interact with you to help guide you through the process. Yeah, but you know, I could also call my uncle's husband's wife's brother's sister's yeah. niece who happens to be in real estate with a, a competing company and say, look what I found on a locations app. Yeah. Can, you, can you be my agent for that? So you may yeah, not have every deal that is... No, and, and that's fine. But you know, we, we wanted to create an app that anybody would use um, regardless. I mean, it'd be great if they use us, of course. Uh, then we could go and fund uh, more projects and improve the app even better. But everybody, you know, this Hawaii, uh, there's a lot of people <laughs> who know those who have licenses. So they're more than entitled to use uh, that yeah. other person. Yeah, building yeah. brand, building relationships. Yeah. You know what they say. I don't have to tell you what they say. Real estate is not about land. Real estate is about relationships. That is that is absolutely <laughs> true. That is exactly like true. Everything is about everything is about, about relationships. Video studios are about relationships too, but that's another another discussion. Right, right. <laughs> okay, so you decide you want to do this, yeah. you want to facilitate it for everybody. Right. And you move forward. Mm -hmm. How do you move forward in creating an app like this? Well the one, number one thing, again, is the consumer is going to tell us what they need, mm -hmm. right? So we ask them. In fact... Uh, Becky Ward. Ward. <laughs> right. Ward, Ward, Ward research, research is one... She goes out and asks people questions to decide what's better. A lot of people on her clipboard, you know? That, but, yeah. you know, aside from that, we actually, as an example, we survey every single person who has a transaction with their company. You know, we ask them, how was your experience? Uh, what did you feel about the, the vendors and service providers involved? Uh, and we actually get graded as agents from one through five, you know, uh, and, and we want that feedback because that's going to help us to do a better job the next time. So I think continually getting the feedback from our clients and consumers is going to help us to continue to innovate the next product with our apps or any other tool that we provide to yeah. our clients. Yeah. We're going to talk about that. Yeah. We're going to talk about how this product is going to evolve um, uh, right after this break. We're going to take another okay. break. Uh, stay there, don't leave. In fact, I think you should continue to make notes about what Brandon's been saying. I'm going to come back, you'll be finished writing your notes down, and we'll go to the next chapter in this discussion. We'll be right back. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, 25 talk shows by 25 dedicated hosts every week, helping us to explore and understand the issues and events in and affecting our state. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Aloha. This is Reg Baker. I'm the host of Business in Hawaii. We air every Thursday at 2 o'clock on thinktechhawaii.com. We broadcast from the ThinkTech studios in downtown Honolulu, and we talk about positive and successful companies in Hawaii, people that have been successful despite the obstacles. They all have a good story to tell. Hopefully, we'll see you on Thursday at 2 o'clock. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Kawe Lucas, host of Hawaii is my mainland here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday at 3 p.m. We address issues of importance for those of us who live here on the most isolated landmass on the planet. Please come join me Fridays at 3 p.m. Mahalo. Okay, we are back and you finished writing your notes down what Brandon said in the first part of the show. Now we're going to go into the third part of the show. And the third part of the show, we're going to talk about, you know, how this is going to evolve. I guess I should ask you first, is it successful so far? Oh, yes. Uh, how do you know? Yeah. Well, we, we measure everything in our firm. So we measure how many people come to the app, how much time they spend, what they're looking at. So even before we do the actual survey itself, on the back end, we're able to gauge what people are interested in. Mm -hmm. So that's how we know if we're getting better or not getting better. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't have a better result if you don't know what's going on in Absolutely. the first place. It's a yeah. navigational issue. You right. have to know where you are. Right. But what about uh, you know, competition? You mentioned there were other apps that, um, you know, that did other things, maybe the same things apart, or right. maybe other 
other unrelated to whatever they right. do. Um, how, how are you doing in competition with those? I mean, do you know what they, do you look at them? Do you I, see I, what, I, see I do, I, I sneak in once in a while to see yeah. what the competition is doing. Uh, but there, there are, other, are other apps out there um, which do have good presence. Uh, but again, a lot of them are developed by mainland firms and they're not really focused on the Hawaii consumer. You know, yeah. Again, it, local will always win. Yeah, and what I hear you saying though yeah. is that this app was programmed here in Hawaii Nei. We have a dedicated tech department. Outstanding. Yeah. That's part of your culture. That was that the is. case way back in the days of Michael Sklars and all that. It is. You it know, is. When yeah. you did your own uh, technology. That's correct. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, we are, we're not just a sales firm, but it's uh, real estate sales and research. Yeah. And, and that's something that we're proud of. So people yeah. warm to this idea. They like to be empowered, you know, and that's right. what they feel that the internet and computers in our time, in our generation, well, your generation especially, um, you know, empowers them. They, they, they like that feeling uh, and they want more of it. It's like an insatiable thirst right. for empowerment. Um, so right now, it does certain things, mm -hmm. and it gives you certain possibilities. Right. But you got to be thinking about the next steps. You got to be thinking about the evolution of this or the successor to it. What do you think? What do you what What do you got in your mind? Well, I think uh, the word intuitive comes to mind, mm -hmm. and and I'm not speaking on behalf of our tech department by any means. Uh, I'm not privy to all of their, you know, internal discussions. But as a partner, we do give feedback to them. Uh, knowing that we're on the front lines of interacting with our clients. And so I do know we're always trying to get inside the head of our client, you know, because I think the more that we can identify with their needs, the better we can provide our service. Yeah. And so um, intuitiveness comes in, in different forms. For example, uh, we do have a, a client management software, a CRM, uh, which allows us not just to keep our contact information for our clients, but it allows us to categorize perhaps what their interests are. You know, are they a first-time buyer? Are they an investor? Or maybe they're looking to a, a 1031 exchange? Um, you know, what neighborhoods are they looking at? So those kind of categories help us to provide the right information that they're going to be looking for. And I can imagine that same line of thinking is going to continue to happen as we develop further iterations of our app. How much more can we understand a consumer's thinking to better fulfill uh, what their needs are and what they're needing to do. Well, that's proprietary. You keep yeah. that. You don't yeah. share that with anybody. Right. right. I mean, like if I go to Am if I if I'm a 1031 buyer, right. I, I I'm not going to go to Amazon and see an ad on the right hand side of the page says looking for a oh, yeah. 1031. No, it's, <laughs> it's completely private. You know, and it's we we take that fiduciary responsibility with our client very very seriously. So you know, it's between the client and the agent and how they can service their client better. Yeah. 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 Well. Um, People are going to be, they're going to want more empowerment as time goes on because that's, the, you know, that's, the, that's, that's what's happening and that will continue to happen in, increasingly. Right. Um, and so I'm thinking in my own um, Woody Allen world, right. what, you know, what might be. And uh, I saw the, the, purple, the purple circle that you mm -hmm. made. Mm -hmm. um, but, I, you know, I remember, I don't know if this is actually happening, but there are apps now um, that you walk through a shopping center Oh. And if you turn on the app, you will get sales, you know, from this store and that store, uh, and they will come at you as you walk through the shopping center. And so, you know, turn to your right, you can get a sale on shoes. Turn right. to your left, you can get a sale on shirts. So this purple, this purple circle could uh -huh. be automated. It could be. It uh, could be. You know, yeah. I just walk down the street. If you like this street, we will tell you what's for sale on this street. Exactly. And, <laughs> and uh, you know what? I'm glad you said that because if our tech team is listening, we'll probably put that in our notes. <laughs> That's a very good point. Yeah. 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 Well, why not? I mean, GPS is everything. Every, every, I mean, so many programs are using GPS. GPS. Wearable software. And then, and then you, you know, your point about, uh, you know, the profile uh, yeah. of, the, um, of, of the user. Um, you have certain data about the user. It's good that you keep it because right. you want to be his friend, facilitator, right. Right. his real estate buddy, not only in this transaction, but maybe in others later. Right. Right. Um, so, and people do not resent that as long as you assure right. them that they're not going to abuse the It's all permission-based anyway. Right, right. Yeah. right. So then it becomes a question of how you analyze the information you have. Mm. And maybe you want to enhance that information. I, 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 don't, I can't think of anything offhand, but it just seems to me that 
you know, the power of the algorithm is you take that same data and you analyze it better and you give him thinking process that he can use that will help him in his decision. That's yeah. correct. That's correct. And, yeah. you know, I don't know if there is any better algorithm than sitting down face to face over course. a cup of coffee of course. and seeing how you're doing. Yeah. You know, and Jay, what kind of house are you looking for? Yeah. You know, you yeah. want it to be a three-story yeah. or a two-story, a yeah. single level, yeah. you know, yeah. ocean view. Yeah. So, and I think that's where the agent will always be involved in the process. I know a lot of people are concerned that automation is going to take over the real estate industry. But quite frankly, uh, real estate is far from being a commodity. You know, every house is different. Every situation is different. So it's, it's the agent who's able to best find and judge the needs of the client who can guide them the best uh, that's the kind of service that hopefully a client will come back for yeah I, before I, I said the you know the old statement about how real estate is really about relations right but in some part it's also about psychology <laughs> it's yeah. about finding a friend who you can talk to about your innermost thoughts about your estate and your plan right. and your family and your expectations and aspirations that's correct. So you actually fall into a sort of psychological friend role when you, when you talk that way because people really do need that. <laughs> we try to be <laughs> as best we can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it change over the, changes over the course of the process. You, know, you yeah. can be a friend at one time, but you have to be an advisor. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you have to say, no, I, you know, that's not a good situation that you want to get yourself involved into. You know, and, and some people don't think that a realtor would say that. But if you're properly advising your client, sometimes it has to come up with a no. Yeah, and that's is that part working. of the app now? I mean, for example, it's you know this house is a is a hundred million dollar condominium, right. and I make uh, you know not very much. Um, so as I'm walking by, it doesn't talk to me. That one doesn't talk to me. Or if I uh, uh, approach it, you know, and pay attention to it, it says, "Jay, that one's not for you." No, we're. I don't think we prejudge anybody <laughs> in that sense. <laughs> But, you know, on a person's own volition, we do have a mortgage calculator. You know, so you put in what your gross income is, it says, okay, well, you allow this for your debt to income ratio, and then it'll calculate what your affordability range is. Yeah. So I think it's driven by the consumer. I don't think we ever yeah. want to assume what they can or cannot do. Yeah. Uh, but we want to make those tools available, of course, yeah. you know. Now, what about the uh, transaction management, which I enjoyed hearing about a minute ago? Right. Um, is that in the app? Maybe it's in the app to come. Uh, where I can I can punch in, well, I don't have to punch in the date. It knows the date. I can take a look at the status of the transaction, and it'll tell me what has been achieved in the escrow with the realtor, um, with locations, and, and what I need to do, what has to happen now, and what is outstanding. What are my obligations here to get to a closing? Do you have something like that yet? Well, you know, the next time we have a, a think tank, we're going to invite you over. <laughs> Those are great ideas. But I, I can assume that that would probably be coming. In fact, we do currently have a situation, not on the app itself, but when somebody does enter escrow and we have a transaction manager involved, they will be having access to a portal that gives them real time every single thing that's taken place and everything that's yet to come in their transaction. So they don't have to continually wonder, well, do I need to move out by this day? Or when do I have to have my house cleaned by? Or when is that final down payment required? You know, everything is actually given uh, to you um, as your calendar moves along, and it's all done real time. You know? That's great. Yeah. You know, I, I tell you, because I think, um, and present company included, uh, real estate transactions are stressful and disruptive. Yeah. Uh, and you worry about it. You worry about some, something not working out, that you missed something, uh, that you're going to get bit by something. Uh, and so if I can look and see what the status is and, and be comforted <laughs> in some yes, way, yes. I'm feeling a lot, my level of stress goes way down. You right, know? <laughs> right. And you'll probably smile a lot more, right? Through the yeah. whole process, yeah. you know. You gotta look at this you'll call me up with, a, with a, a nice story to tell me instead yeah. of concerns and worries, yeah. you know. Yeah. 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 So how, you know, does this increase the number of transactions that a given residential agent can handle at the same time? Is there a limit? You know, there's no limit, but I, I think every agent wants to make sure that the service level doesn't drop. Yeah. So as an example, you know, I, I mentioned we have a, a survey that happens after every transaction. Well, if we notice that client feedback has said, well, you know, this person didn't get back to me in, in a timely manner, or that, f that five, which is excellent, turned to four, 
you want to go back and reevaluate how your service is uh, being provided to your, your client base. So what you want to do is you want to see, well, how can you delegate some of the um, so-called non-essential functions to somebody like a transaction manager who's probably better and more efficient at it than you are anyway. Yep. You know? So what happens is you have a specialization of the escrow process that ultimately makes sure that every part of the um, experience is optimized in terms of getting done well and effectively. You know? And so overall, that could lead to more transactions. But I think the bottom line is you want it to be the best uh, client experience possible. Yes. Yeah. And furthermore, you can learn from every, uh, I think you are learning from every client experience, right. and you can put hopefully some of that into new functionality for this app so that it becomes world class. And exactly. people in Cincinnati want to, you know, they want to see what you've done. That's a, that's a problem, isn't it? Somebody, <laughs> somebody could copy your app. They're going to like know, it so much they could copy it in Cincinnati. If you're innovating, you're not concerned because right. you're always going to be one step ahead. Right, right. One more question, and that sure. is this. You know, we've been talking, and, and I mean, Hawaii generally thinks along the lines that the market will be better tomorrow than it is today. Right. Uh, and, you know, and I think that's been true. I mean, there are certain dips. We could all identify certain dips for one reason or another. But generally speaking, if you start in the 60s or a statehood, whoa, I think I'll back there now. I got oh. some things I'd like to buy. <laughs> <laughs> Should have bought five of them, right? <laughs> as many as possible. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty much been up. Right. Now we have issues, we have fiscal issues in the state. Um, you know, we, we talk about it a lot on, in ThinkTech and another agency, you know, Civil Beat covers a lot of this right. too. Civil Beat's a great publication. <coughs> it is, they, it is, and it tells it like it really is. Yeah. And, and so, you know, some of those things are threatening, you know, some of the, the, the you know, fiscal failures, uh, economic risks, uh, climate change, whoa, caca, right. aco. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, which affects the way people see the market. And, you know, I would say that some of those things are like pent up problems mm. where nobody really pays attention until something happens. And then all of a sudden you have a up, down the slope. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I worry about that. I think we right. should all worry about that. Right. But what happens if the market goes south? If the real estate market, you know, for example, tourism drops for some reason, who knows right. what? And it happened after 9-11, everybody remembers, but tourism drops, the economy drops, construction drops, and of course the real estate market will drop. I mean, we worry about that. What happens to the app? What happens to the role of the real estate person mm. um, you know, in, in handling the transactions to follow? Now we're talking about helping people buy. When that happens, it'll be more about helping people sell. Right, right. <laughs> No, that's a good question, Jay. I, I think what's interesting is people do have some doom and gloom fears, especially since Hawaii has had a good streak uh, in increasing prices and activity over the past five years. Uh, I think if I can put a little bit of uh, what ifs in there, you know, uh, I don't know if the what if would be a, a tanking of the market. I think it's more a matter of, well, what happens when prices get a little higher than the average household is able to afford, right? Now, the, the nice thing about real estate is that we all have to live somewhere. You know, we're not all going to live in a cardboard box somewhere. We're going to have to live in a home, whether we own it or we, whether we rent. And so even if the tourism economy experience will slow down, um, I think people are going to still need somewhere to live. Uh, even if we had some shakeup from international markets and the economy started to slow down, I think people are going to still need a place to live. So real estate has that advantage over any other asset class, is that people are living in what we'd also consider their investment. Um, now, fortunately for us, if you're a homeowner, as you know, we have a rate of population growth that is uh, faster than the number of homes that we're currently building. So we're short. So we do have pent up demand. And so given that scenario, plus the people that want to live here because of the weather, or because of the fact we have great appreciation, there's a lot of demand and a little supply. So I don't think we're uh, close to having a fallout in the market. In fact, I feel pretty confident about where things are. Could things slow down in the future? Yes. Could interest rates have some effect? Yes. Uh, but I think when you look at the long run of the market, uh, you're going to have continued demand and increasing values in the long run. Yeah. yeah. Well, the problem is that you, be, before you, you know, take your stash out of it, you know, sell it and take your money and 
move to Las Vegas, <laughs> whatever. Right. Um, you got to cover the expenses. You got to cover the mortgage. You got to cover the operating expenses, whatever they are. And there was a piece that came out. I think you, Hero, at the university was involved in the last couple of days about how people in Hawaii spend a huge percentage of their disposable income for housing. Right. And it's a problem. I, I forget what it was. I think it's in the 40s, maybe late 40s percent of their income goes to housing. And this goes to a long-term problem in Hawaii where land is limited and therefore too expensive. And whatever the system has been doing over the past hundred years, you know, has resulted in, in real estate and occupancy prices that are slightly more, well, well more, in some cases than the average individual can afford. So he may buy a valuable property. He may pay a good price for the valuable property, but he's still spending too much of his income right. to stay there. And this does not sound sustainable. Comment? Well, I think uh, what you have there, you have options, right? So if I couldn't afford the, the home in Honolulu for 700,000, I can always look outside to a couple of Eva or Makakilo uh, for five or six hundred thousand. So the reality is even developers are looking at that potential issue. And so you have new upcoming projects like Ho'opili uh, and you have, um, let's see, they have the Castle and Cook development coming up. Um, it's a good thing and, because it takes the, the pressure off the housing shortage. Yeah, yeah. and that was Coral Ridge. Mm -hmm. But you know, even th those developers are saying, okay, what can the local buyer afford and what's feasible for us to develop? And I think you're going to have solutions in that arena. So it's not just looking at what's existing to solve our problem, but what can be done in the future and built in the future to fit the needs and the household incomes of Hawaii's families. I feel confident you'll be there, Brandon. Uh, I will be. And you'll yeah. be facilitating and um, offering kind counsel, if not psychology, and good relationships with your clientele. So thanks for, thanks for your uh, you know, contribution to the real estate uh, process and community. And thanks for coming down and talking to us. Thank you, Jay. I appreciate being on your show. Thank Aloha, you. Aloha, Brenda. Thank you. <laughs> okay. We're